Well, it's been uh, quite a journey. First, I wanted to say thanks for all my thin friends that came out today. I've never had my, uh, what do you call the person that takes your blood? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get my blood drawn every week. Uh, sometimes m multiple times a, a week and my fr favorite uh, person to do that is Kelly and she came today to hear me speak and uh, sitting right here next to Kathy and s many other visitors came today and I thank all of you for coming. It's been quite a journey these last two years though and I just wanted to touch on a couple things for that. Uh, it's been a good trip. Most of you probably wouldn't think that, but it has been. It's been, uh, in fact, I would tell you the last eight years of my la life have been the best eight years of my life. And I would add to that the last two have been the best of the last eight. And you probably can't imagine how somebody could say that when they've been fighting for their life for the last two years. But I look at it and think, if I had to pick the way I die, this is not a bad way. You get warning. See, my, my brother-in-law, Mike, just yesterday, now he's okay. <laughs> you get, but he, you just yesterday, he, he sells Volvo, Volvos. Not, he's not ninth in this nation. He sells a lot of Volvos up in um, uh, Ontario, uh, Ontario, California. He's taken somebody for a drive. Actually, they're driving. I don't know what they were thinking. They just drove up right through a red light. It hits, hits the guy right in front of them. They, they, they didn't see the red light. And going 40 miles an hour, an hour um, uh, totals, a, totals a brand new Volvo. He's in the drive. Uh, passenger seat. He's just banged up. No bro broken bones or any anything, but a big truck, not a, like a, you know, what would that kind of truck be? Tundra. Tundra. Knocks him into the, you know, into, you know, and two of them end up in an ambulance and taken to the hospital. But, you know, your life could be open over in a second. They gave me 12, 12 to 14 months. It changes your perspective on everything. So I looked at it. I mean, I was ready to go. It's not when you get warning. My daughter got to come out and visit six different times from Florida. I was ready to go to heaven, but it's nice when you get warning. It's nice to you know, make sure everything's lined up. It's, it's really nice to know you, you're retired and have to wait very long. <laughs> you know? I think Pastor even likes it, you know? I, I always get to pick up the bill, except when he tricks me. <laughs> you know? But God is that good. And, and, uh, it's pretty neat when we get to spend time together. And it's, it's pretty neat when you have a wonderful wife that takes care of you. We don't get to go on a lot of vacations. We did uh, a year and a half ago when I could still do more things. But we've had a wonderful time together. I hurt every day. But you get used to a certain amount of 
you get used to headaches, you get, can I be honest? Honest, sometimes I get, everyone has to get mad at me. Why do you have to give me a frozen shoulder too? Why do you have to make my eye hurt too? Why do you have to make my nose hurt? Is the cancer not quite enough? You know? And then I think, you know, sorry God. You know? I know people have so much more things than I have. I've been blessed in so many ways. You know? But he has. He's blessed us in so many ways. We have such a nice life. I, mornings are tough. I wake up every morning and I, can I take Tylenol yet? I try not to take the heavy duty pains. I forgot what, why my doctor tells me not to, but you know, he says save them till you just really, really need them. And, and um, so I try to save them. And they usually last me a month or two. Like, I only get 12 at a time, but, but I um, just took two Tylenols before I came up here, and, and they usually get me through. But I've been blessed in so many ways, but the last eight years have been my best years, and the last two have been the best of the eight, even as I go through this chemos and, and uh, radiation. Oh, this is what I want to tell you, and, I, and I'm really going to watch the time, because I promised pastor I'd be short today. <laughs> so the message will be really short. <laughs> but I went in, they, they, they have this, they have no cure. You know, the only sh sh shot I have is Jesus. And I'm a car that's going to heaven. So I'm okay either way, you know. But, but they have no, no cure. And so they, they throw this stuff at you. You know, that once you're th through with the basic, like, um, care. yeah, care, normal care, they just start throwing stuff at you or put you on uh, hospice. And I always, I always ask them, you know, Kathy doesn't like the answers, but I ask them, well, what's this going to do? And Dr. Green, who's the head doctor for Kaiser for Southern California for brain cancer, says, not much. <laughs> you know, what can I expect? Well, probably nothing. <laughs> and, uh, but it's all we got, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so usually you don't get anything. But I had a couple really good breakthroughs. I got good reports on something that only happens 10% of the time. And then that lasted for two months. And then the third month, uh, cancer grew by 300%. That wasn't really encouraging. But, but for two months, it did good. And then they gave me a radiation. And I said, what should we expect from that? And he says, Phew. you know, you can either go on, you know, we can put you on, on uh, uh, what's it called? Hospice. Hospice again, or we can try this, but, you know. And then we're looking at, at, at the next month after the 10 more days of uh, radiation. And he goes, wow, it's smaller. I said, that sounds good. He says, it's amazing. And, uh, and, um, and, and he says, really, this really is amazing. He says, uh, this is the leading guy. He's out of LA for um, Kaiser. And uh, he says, this is the first patient I've had. This is the leading guy in Southern California any help from this, not in the country, but for Kaiser in Southern California. I'm the first person that's ever got help from it. I thought, oh, Kathy goes, is it for prayer? I don't know. <laughs> you know? But then the second month, the second month when it helped, it goes, well, oh, maybe, you know. He's a Jewish guy, and uh, we 
Now, last year, I was there for two months to see if it goes past two months this time. But either way, I may pray God, I got two months, two more months, and I got a chance for you guys to have to sit and listen to me. <laughs> Put up with me for 20 minutes or whatever I take today. But God is good. And uh, I got to tell you that the last two years have been wonderful, even though I wake up every day with a headache and hurting. And you get used to a certain amount. You just get used to it. So when you face things, know that it's, it's okay. We're all... You know, people say, well, you're dying. Well, we're all dying, you know? It's whether you're right with Jesus or not that makes the difference. If you're not right with Jesus, we need to talk. If you're not 100% certain, we need to talk. Talk with talk, pastor, talk with me, talk with chef, talk with somebody that they know they're right. And, and, and make sure that you're, you know, when you get to, at, to the gates and they ask you, why shall I let you know? They, they let you in. Know that you know the answer. Okay? Anyway, we're talking about Advent. You know, we just heard the message. So I, don't, I think I can skip that section. No. But ab Advent, the coming of Jesus as a, as a baby, as a baby, baby. Um, I hope you'll just ignore some of the words that just, they just won't come out. I try, uh, uh, sometimes it's a simple, simple little word that it just won't. I know the word, I can't spell it anymore, I can't say it anymore, but it just won't come out. It'll come out as soon as I get in the car to go home, but it won't come out now. But uh, you, you know the story, the, the, the Timothy, the, the star, the, the no room at the inn. You know, we, we know the story. But uh, then, but today we're, the uh, passage the uh, pastor read for me is this coming of Jesus ministry. And it was Jan, uh, John the Pastist talking about repenting. When I, I remember, I don't know if you guys are like this or not. I know I was like this a lot. I would be, this was my version of repenting. Oh God, forgive me for doing this. And I just keep doing it. God, God, forgive me. I, I can't believe I thought these things about this girl in high school, and I just and I just kept doing it. And and but repenting is more like, God, forgive me for this, and turning, and going the other direct, direction. That's what repent means. It's turning around, going the other way. It's not continuing doing the same thing. In today's day and age, it seems to be more like repenting is, you know, it is all about, you know, being saved is about grace. We understand that. Do we understand? We can't earn it. But still, repenting is turning around and going the other way. We have to grab hold of that. I can, I don't, I don't know. I've been there so many times as a young person. And as an old person, I need to say that too. Where I've, 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 uh... Have you ever been to the point where you told God, Oh God, I want to, I want to be a... I want to really burn for you. I want, I want to be all yours. I want to be sold out for you. I want to be a super, superstar for you, God. Just knight me or whatever you need to do. Just, I'm ready. Just, you know, and, and it doesn't work that way. Go ahead and make me yours, God. It doesn't work that way. But 
we act like it does. What does Jesus coming mean to you? I sometimes think about it as like I, I make an illustration sometimes about what's on your plate. What's on your plate? Because we, we tend to do what's on our plate. I don't know if that makes any sense to you or not, but we tend to fill up our plate and then tend to it. And, and uh, for years, even when I was a pastor, I allowed other people to fill up my plate. Is that my drink down there? Yeah. Just so you know, it's really not coffee. I don't even treat coffee. Coffee is water. It's before you start you know, thinking, well, I want that coffee. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it is coffee. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Coffee makes me sick. But, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Fill up your flake. So uh, people would come up and, hey, can you do this? And I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. Hey, can you do this? Yeah, I can do that. Before long, your, your plate is full, you know? And you're not doing the things you really need to do. Well, you think you can, but you can't. Everybody has the same size plate. It's 24 hours. You know, it's not really a plate. You know, it's a, you have so much time. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's say you're, my wife's probably scared to death I'm going to tumble over there. I kind of am too. <laughs> and, but let's say you're, you're going through a, a cafe. And you go, yeah, 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 some of those green beans. Yeah, lean and, lean and green. And put a, you know, scoop on there, and yeah, some of that roof ro base, yeah, 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 scoop of that, uh, uh, yeah, mass, mass potatoes and gravy, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a uh, scoop of, uh, give me a scoop of that uh, God. Whoa, not that much, <laughs> you know, just a little scoop, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, how about, uh, yeah, a scoop of uh, HBO. Wait, wait, can you put that on a little bit different tape, uh, tape, uh, a plate? I don't know if God wants that on there. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so we, we, we fill up our plate with so many things, but for long, before long, there's not an, enough room for the things we really need to put on there. And, uh, and, I don't know where I'm at on these cards, but I probably should. <laughs> no, my poor wife wrote them all up for me. <laughs> can't read my own writing, writing anymore. Can't spell anything anyway. But, uh, that's how I discovered I was sick. I thought I had Alzheimer. Couldn't spell, couldn't write. But anyway, look at this, uh, this plate and walking down, the, filling up, filling up my tray. And if you're not careful, you filled it up with the wrong things. They're not necessarily bad or evil things. In fact, I've discovered pretty early on the group that's going to gather here, it's not bad good. It's just busy. Before long, you're so busy. You really need to do first. Or need 
to be caught up with you. you know, the things that you really ought to be burning for, the things you really ought to be all out, out, out for are left behind because you're too busy with the things that they, they matter, but they don't matter that much. Does that make any sense? Are any of you kind of like me on that? That's kind of what has to, happens to most of us. We get caught up in the things that, do you think maybe the enemy is involved with any of that? He said, well, he knows you're not going to go out and rob a, ba rob a bank or something crazy like that, but if he can get you tied up on things that don't really matter so much that you just can't do the things that he really wants you to do, then he's won that battle. And I think that's pretty important. Especially, I don't know how to say this del delicately, as we get older, I'm getting older, <laughs> especially health-wise, I'm already supposed to be gone. Bye, Don. <laughs> you know? But I just, getting sick changed my perspective a lot. And um, if I could encourage you anyway, I need to skip a bunch of cards. I don't know where I'm at right now, but I can't go through all these or I'm going to make you late instead of early. <laughs> Pastor says they don't mind getting out early. <laughs> so I'm going to try to forward a whole bunch of queer cars and see where I end up. I just love to see you all at the place I'm at. Not sick. But really, you're changing your perspective without having to be sick like I am. Where you realize that it's time to take, take stock of where you're at. Where you're at with Jesus. Are you where you want to be? Do you want to be closer to him like I wanted to be? And I want to, hey, maybe I'm closer to you, God. And the message I received back is, you can be as close as you want. But it's not about me going, eh, you're close. You know, it's about, it's not about him doing that to me. It's about me going, crawling, drawing closer to Him. Amen. That's what it's about. All of us can be, in fact, I'll go on the record as saying all of us are as close to Him as we want to be right now. It's have we done what it takes. Well, what's it take? It takes us bowing to Him. Oh God, forgive me for not doing it. Oh God, forgive me for not doing the things that it takes to be closer to you. If you catch anything from my little wanderings today, who knows if they made sense. And my brain is really kind of out there. In fact, that's what I prayed for today. So I don't care if they understand what I say. I just want them to catch what you want him to catch. I just ho hope and pray that he comes through to you and that you will open your heart and say, I just want to be closer to you, God. I 
want to be more like you. You know, as we get ready to close, what time is it? Like, okay, five to twelve. Wow, so later than I thought. <laughs> what are you hunger, hun, hungry for on your plate? Do you want God to be uh, a side, dish? side dish? Thank you, honey. <laughs> or do you want him to be an entree? That's what kind of what I want us to think about tonight, today. Is he your entree or just a side dish? And I'd like to, maybe we, pastor is going to close, but before he does, I want us to have like a pre-close. <laughs> and I'd like us to pray. And if anybody wants to come down and pray, I'd like that too. But I'd like us to uh, really think about that. Do you want, is, is he a side, uh, side dish in your life or is he um, entree. entree? Thanks, honey. Tumor. Is he, is he an entree? And if he isn't, I know most of you. I know you're, you, you love God, but have you really turned everything to him? Has he, have you made him first in your life? Not just a scoop, but the plate and if you haven't, you know, there's nothing more important than to turn it to Him. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, Paul talks about every day. If Paul has to make a new commitment every day, man, Don sure has to, you know. And, and I think most of us probably have to, too. It's, it's just important to make sure we're really right with him. We're not talking about being saved we're, this morning. If you need to be saved, you, you sure need to make, make sure of that before you leave, go today. But, but I'm talking about making sure we're really up to date, wholly committed to him. Is he our... Uh, What's the word, honey? Entree. Entree. Is he really our all, all in awe? Are we to, totally committed to him? Is, are, is our hearts really, I mean, and I think this is a daily thing we should talk to ourselves and talk to God about, are we really committed to him? And that's not a bad thing. So, so often we talk, we think about, oh, what people think? Who, they think it's wonderful to examine our lives like that every day. Every day, from pastor to me to every one of us. Are we really right with him? And not really not right, but are we totally committed to him every day? We have struggles every day. We have Paul's talked about it every day. Why don't we all stop, stand together? I'm going to pr pray and... If anybody feels... touch. We would love to see revival come. We would love just to make sure that you are on the throne of our hearts. Probably everybody in here or just about everybody in here knows you. But are you first? 
above everything else in our life or are you just one above many? If anybody needs to just make a new commission, commitment, I pray they would just step out and come and be part of this closing time and pray at this off, off, altar. We love you so much, Lord. If there's more, please give them the grace, the courage to just come out. Kneel at your altar, or sit at the front bench, and talk to you, God. Nothing more important. God, you're so good. They're here, you're here. If you're speaking to anybody else right now, help them to just step out. Oh, Lord, Terry, another minute. Our heads bowed and our eyes closed. If there's anyone that just would like me to remember them in prayers, they just slip up their, uh, their arms out of their hand, I'd be happy to Remember them in prayers. I see that. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else? Just a minute, I'm going to turn the service back to the pastor.
And just like Don does every day, we choose to live in the hope and the light of your life. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for the message today. Continue to move and walk with Don and walk with each and every one of us as we walk forward in hope and love. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Love you. And we're at the point where I love dismissing and giving a blessing. And if you haven't experienced this with me before, typically what I do is I outstretch my arms. And it's your choice, but in response, typically I say, go on and outstretch your arms too, because it's like I'm giving you something and you're receiving it. So here's the blessing. And now may you go with the grace and the love of our God, of Jesus Christ, his son, with the ever walking presence of the Holy Spirit. May you know God's power in this Christmas season. May you move forward in his love. May you be the church. May you make sure that your plate isn't too full. <laughs> May you make sure that the side dish isn't filled with God, but that he is the plate on which your life is lived. May you walk forward in God's grace. Be the church. Go in peace. You are dismissed. Amen. Amen. Thank you.